Now, top five for the management perspective. But I've seen that before. So I'm just saying, that's that's exactly the point. Sometimes we get this, sometimes we get better, sometimes it's just normal wear and tear, right? And it just happens. Uh, I'll give an example. My first property made this amount of money. Uh, I, one time I walked in and the guy was a hoarder. I mean, fine, I walked in and I had my loafer and my denim. I walked into the property management. I, don't, I tore the whole thing, got out. And what I didn't realize that carpet had a lot of things. So next day, half of my leg was all red. So it is real. So property management, it happens. You see a lot. Unless you can tell stories, you have not done enough. So as a GA, as a as a general partner, as a manager of an asset, I always remind myself that if I truly believe in pro forma, and if I write it down, what does the pro forma say? The underwriting assumes you will be 100% right for everything in pro forma. That means that every day for the next 1,500 years, 1,500 days or so. That line itself is a wrong, it's a false statement, right? So as you look at the pro forma, have breathing room within the project. Otherwise, it's going to be tough because we're not going to get the same $10 rent bump exactly in the January the way Excel calculated to give you an X amount of IRR. So project perspective, as we own it, we always look for what's my plan B, what's my plan C, what's going to come get me, what's up coming up six months from now, how do I position myself? So that is a good reminder that in Excel file, in a business model, we built a plan based on the purely from the Excel perspective, it tells me I'll be right 1,500 days so straight up. But that's not, it's not right, it's just not life, right? So have breathing room. We always remind ourselves what is the breathing room. Second thing is the manager's was the must lie with the LPs that I do. I, I brought that in because as asset managers, we get into a lot of different things. Uh, and, and our managers are not built the same. All of us are not the same. And sometimes your loyalty get misaligned. So we always remind that as a manager, their loyalty must be at the LPs at a time. And for an LP, look at it different ways. Uh, the way you should take a look at it. If, like, I'll give an example. For Massive, we don't do 90, 10 days. We don't do 85, 15 days. We barely do 80, 20 days. We are comfortable at 70, 30 days. And oftentimes, LPs will come on and say, yeah, I like my 90, 10, because the bias towards the LPs. I was like, yeah, that's true. But then what's the, what's the, what's on the other side? You're hiring a C-level team, and they're going to work for two pennies, and to pay the bill, they're going to pick up 10 other side hustles. So you misalign your objective because of what you're trying to get. So always look for the healthy way of taking looking at it. So we always remind all of our partners and us, it's a five years of commitment. Your family, your kids, your school, your wife, everybody will show up in between the five years. But guess what? We have a job to deliver. It's not a volunteer work. It's a job. So make sure that all the things that we do for five years aligns with the LPs at all time. Very important. Um, number three, it's being local doesn't mean local in real estate. I want to say it again. I live. I lived in Houston. I was. I've been local for twenty uh, over two decades in Houston. I'm a Houstonian, if you had asked me. But I, I wasn't local till twenty eighteen. On the real estate terms, the real estate terms local means you know the area. I get it. everybody can know the area, but you own assets. You have been through a couple of tax cycles. Top of rains, maybe no fire, but some tornadoes. You broke stuff, you take the bills, so you know people there. That's why we say when we take a look at it, that you know, if someone says, I live in a Detroit, I'm local Detroit, we ask the question how many assets that you own. If you're zero, then hey, you are not local. You're just like the living in Houston, right? Time to invest in Detroit. So be very an objective about that one. And then number four, it showed up pretty heavily, is the liquidity at the partner level. We always said JP10. But hey, we gotta have liquidity outside the project at us level. And because uh, things go sideways, right? And if you go sideways, you have to cover that. Uh, if I can't cover it, then the deal team is too skinny, put you in a very defensive posture coming in. And we also recommend that for everybody that have liquidity within the GP team. If the team that you're putting together, uh, that, that barely makes the deal at the very time, it is a very tough team and you have an extremely high likelihood that Tim is not No one, no one's home. home right now. Sorry. Do you mind the staff? Oh, sorry. And uh, so if you don't, if you have the team very tight for that deal, then 
when you do a second deal, which by design you'll do it, then that team will not carry over because they matched out. That means you have to go double to the work, you have to know everything else, everything else. So the liquidity matters really. Uh, in the last five, what we said, being a good manager at a job environment doesn't equate to be a good asset manager. It just doesn't. Right? I mean, this is a true entrepreneurship. All bets are up and you are figuring things out for your LPs when that happens. It is, it's like a, you are a CEO, you are a CEO, you are a CFO, you're everything. Or when you're an asset manager, you're managing lender relationship, like investor relationship in big companies with the IR company, with the Goldman Sachs, things like that. We're doing the same thing. And if you don't come from a solid background from somewhere, and all of a sudden you want to lead a $30 million deal towards a $30 million company, then how would you call broker to or not a broker to a Tony? A quit talking BS, right? Or how would you go back to a lender and negotiate on a $30 million deal if you're not comfortable from before, right? So it's true entrepreneurship. Uh, that's what we believe. Last and the bonus. Oftentimes we see that you and your partner will not, someone will outgrow somebody. And it is tough uh, if you start based on a relationship. Someone will outgrow somebody and if the other party is, if one party outgrows too much, your partnership will fall out. And it, it happened, it happens, and we see it, uh, we experience it. Uh, so just understand that both party has to grow. So what we said, don't build the relation and don't build a team based on purely on a relationship first, build the team on the skill set first, then the relationship kicks in and that team will stay longer. All right, so let me go to the next one. All right, so last one that we have, I said, look, I finished everything, but what the school of hard knocks will look like. See what we said. So I'm married. Hopefully all of you guys are married. We'll appreciate how fun it is being married, but you get your fair share of it, right? So I thought this one, hey, multi-family is cool. It's passive on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, you get your fair share of it, right? This is this is why I'm taking a look at it. So we're going to have fun with it. So again, um, Nothing is guaranteed. Keep on reminding yourself, nothing is guaranteed. But the beautiful thing is, on the flip side, it's beautiful. I kid you not. Everything real, everything rolls into real estate. Look around this room but outside. It doesn't matter how many billions you have. and uh, doesn't matter how little you have. Everything will lead to real estate. Flipping apartments, it's a long game. The longer you can stay, better it is. It's not a short game. The way we take a look at it, think about time horizon. House flipping takes you about a year. And if we do a decent amount of you know, rehab, industrial, less than a million and a half, two million takes about three years. Once you touch that about three, it takes three to five years to flip. And once you touch a $30 million, $50 million deal, which is more than 250 units, it takes five, six, seven years to flip. And third one, it takes time to build your business, sorry about the typo, and also your investment portfolio. Give yourself three years to, to get to wherever you want to get to. It applies on the LP side and it applies onto the GP side as well. Because three to five years is your typical time horizon for most of the deals that we underwrite. Some will exit early, some will exit late. But in general, if you want to build a portfolio as an LP investor and you say, I want my portfolio to give me X amount of return, probably it's three years. If you're a GP, same way. If you're an LP, it could be a little faster. If you're a GP, it's definitely a little later because your multifamily is a, it's a slow process. So give yourself enough time, enough cushion in our patients, and then you go about building it as you kind of go through and also know you'll be executing a business plan multiple times, not just one deal and get done with it. You'll be active. It's a it's a drug once it kicks in, it's a fantastic one to have. Uh, sponsor team, uh, one of those simple lining that we see or, or experience that, uh, that came true and caused most of the failures it's larger the portfolio, larger the GP team employee count on payroll. If someone said, I have $100 billion of the assets and you have two employees, run. It is very important to have a team behind the team, a succession plan and things like that. Because if someone running an $80 million deal, and if that's just one individual with another partner, and we're building everything on the individual, life happens, right? He gets, you know, she gets sick, they go to the hospital for three, four, five, six months, God forbid, the whole bus comes to a stop and a scratching hard. So really be careful at that. Look at the deal size, look at the deal team, look at the FTEs behind the picture, anything. 
Um, and also, if you are a GP, if you're underwriting it, do not assume they're going to get a rich bass submission fee. It's just overhead if you do it right. Uh, last but not the least, it is knowledge doesn't get you far in Monte Carlo. You will not. You can write, you can afford short really, really quick. It's knowledge and the resourcefulness and the ability to execute. Those three has to be true for, for us to go through the, the whole process as you go. So that's what I had for today. And yeah, so I sorry, I, I copied over the slide, but all of my life had to work smarter, don't work harder. I was looking at the turtle. The whole point was, hey, we really have to know how to work smart, right? I cannot find if I'm a brand new, uh, if, if I'm a brand new person coming into the game, want to buy my first multi family, and then guess what? There's an established process and there's active players. There is a ways to go on about it. Everybody has everything we don't. We have to think slightly differently. So work smart, don't work. I mean, work hard, but also work smart. Otherwise, it'll be tough to get to the winning position that we have. So that's all I had for today.